Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about color blending. Um, if you've watched my previous video with the mermaid and the silhouette, then um, you'll know that this part of the video is actually part of that painting that I um, was showing you how to transfer the stencil and how to paint around the stencils um, when you're doing that. So for example, this one here, so um, this, the silhouette um, was stenciled on and um, painted and then uh, so I showed how to do that and then also how to paint around it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're doing one similar to this, um, but we're doing the mermaid. And um, so I'm going to show you today how to do the color blending part of that, which is the background. Um, similar to this, where we've gone from white to the turquoise to blue. So that's that, that seamless blending from one color to the next. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do that today. Uh, we're going to use my mermaid painting. So this is what we've started. And um, so we've got to this point uh, with a lot of our other video. I'm going to show how we paint around the mermaid. But today, uh, for this video, we're going to focus on how I get the colors to blend seamlessly from one to the next. So I'm going to take you down to the table and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, you can see I've got all of my um, stencil for my circles all lined up. Again, that's also in the other video to show you how to do that um, if you're interested in learning how to do that. Um, I'm going to start off by painting my light, which is going to be my white. While I'm letting my white dry between coats, I do want to talk about um, the color blending just a little bit more and that you can actually do this on stones um, really easily. Um, I know that for my paintings, I know the distance that I want between my colors. Um, and when I show that to you, mine, so my distance is going to be a little bit more for this painting, but it doesn't have to be. So you can do like this uh, stone here I just did the other day and I went from pink and uh, transitioning into purple and transitioning into blue and it's only a short amount of time before I'm transitioning my colors. So I will show you the technique to do it in a, in a shorter uh, distance. Um, if you're not doing a painting and you want to do this on a stone, I'll also show you a picture here as well um, of another uh, stone that I created in the same way uh, that found its home already. So I just have the picture but um, I'll show that to you as well and that's on uh, um, a round uh, gypsum stone that I created. So you can do this really beautifully on, um, on the stones. When I do the stones, I tend to put the white dots in the center. I'm going to show you on this painting how I'm going to um, change that up a little bit, how I do that for the paintings. So whichever way you, you want to do that, you are more than welcome to do that. You can also not do the tiny dots in the center, which is for this one. I didn't do um, the tiny filler dots. I just left it really simple and... Um, you can see that and I know you're wondering maybe what filler dots I'm talking about at this point um, but just some examples so this one I kept really simple and um, as you can see this one with the tiny little white dots is what I am talking about um, it just fills in your background a little bit more and I am going to do that with my painting but we're going to do it a little bit differently Okay, so I'll probably give that another layer of paint after it's really dry, but we're going to get started on um, the dots here while we're waiting for that one to dry. So I just am going to use, where's my tools here, uh, just a couple tools. Um, I tend to not want to vary too much in my dot size um, and try and keep them quite even uh, as I go along. Uh, I have had done it where I've changed it up a little bit. Here I'll show you a picture of one that I did vary the size and the details. But for this one, we're going to just keep it um, pretty even, like this one here. So you can see um, all my dots are, are quite even all the way along, and that's what we're going to do for this one as well. Okay, so you want to choose kind of what your dot size is going to be for your um, painting. I'm going to choose uh, this one here. It's probably about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger than, um, where's my nail head? So this is a nail head, like a picture nail head. You can kind of see um, the size 
that I'm going to be choosing for this one, which is the same tool I used for um, the rainbow uh, mandala with, with the girl in the umbrella. But I do want to start off around my light with um, a smaller size just to get um, just to get my bearings for my and my guidelines for it and then we'll increase um, a little bit as we go along and then as the rest of the painting goes it will just be my one size I also need my toothpick as well so what we're gonna do to start off is we're just we want to make sure that our dots are even so what I am gonna do is I'm going to start off by doing my top to bottom and side to side this is how I always start off my um, my dots around my center circle just because then I know they're all going to be even and then I do the middle of those dots and I just keep carrying on with the same way until all my space is filled in and my circle is done okay so i've done all my dots all the way around now i know with my colors that i've chosen i want to do about um five or six rows um, between from one color to the next with all the blended colors in between but for this one i don't want to go that far um, just because i want the light to stand out a little bit more um, this is why I did the white dots around the white circle and I'm just going to I just want to do a couple rows where I'm blending that white out and getting into my colors so what I've done is I've just taken um, a little bit of white and put it in a tray and I'm taking my first color and I'm just going to add a little bit of it to my tray because I want it to stay pretty white, but I do want to start bringing in a little bit of that color. Okay, so I'm going to take my next color, or my um, tool that I'm going to be using basically for all of my... Um, rows of dots now that I've had my smaller dots here and we're just going to go around now I'm just using a little bit of paint on these ones not quite as much as I'm going to be using for my other dots because want these ones still a little bit smaller okay so I've gone around with my um, tool and I've made my next line now before I go on to my next color or my next um, shading I'm going to be taking my toothpick and I'm just going in between each of the little valleys and this is what I was talking about for the filler dots so after each color I do for this one, I'm adding a filler dot into those valleys. Okay, so you can see that I've done all the filler dots. I also went around and did um, the white filler dots as well. So this is what I was saying about, um, you can choose not to do that. For this one, I didn't do this. I just left, I just did the big dots all the way around. So you can choose to do this part. Um, the detail part or um, just leave it as is and just do the bigger dots okay so now I'm ready to um, blend a little bit more color this is probably gonna be my last one that I do with white um, because then I really want to get into my my colors so I've added quite a bit here so I just want I want to make sure that that color is starting to really show through here now Okay, so now I'm just going to take my tool and I'm going to do the same thing all the way around with my new color. Okay, so now comes the fun part. So I know that for, like I had said, for me, I want to have about um, six 
uh, rings between my first color and my second color and then obviously going forward my third and fourth and etc so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start off with my little tray and if you've got a plate that's fine um, but I'm going to do smaller amounts as I go so I've got my main color and now I'm going to start making smaller amounts into each spot except for the last one I'll actually put a little bit more in here okay and then I'm going to take my second color so now if you this is where if you only wanted to have say three rings um, between then you would just put your your first color and your second color and then combine the two in the middle and then you would have your your three colors or however many circles you've decided if you don't know you can just use your one tray and just keep adding a little bit of the second color a little bit a little bit at a time until you get um, and as you go along. So now I'm doing the same thing except I'm going in the opposite direction. And I'm going to mix these up and then you'll be able to see once you've mixed them where you might need to add more of one color or the next but really what you want to see is um, a nice smooth blend between the colors uh, gradually going from one color to the next may end up only using you know five colors out of the out of the six depending on how much of a change I can create here so that one doesn't need to be mixed so I'm just going to take a look here and so I know that these two are probably going to be about the same so I'm just going to end up doing five here I think I may see um, wanting to do six if I have a, a bigger color change, whereas these two are quite similar. So I'm probably not going to need to do too much. I might actually even just do three. This is really where you can have fun with it. You can do, you know, three or four rings between colors or five or six seven or eight um, doesn't have to be the same throughout your whole painting this will also create some really beautiful layers so I'm going to start with this and I'm going to do my four my four rings here so we're going to just do it in the exact same way and I'm using the same tool that I used earlier and I'm also going to do my filler dots as well so I'm going to do this one and I'm going to show you what that looks like and then we'll come back and we'll do the next color um, which will probably see a bigger change um, or more drastic change in the difference of shading. I'm going to show you here why it's important to keep your background color handy um, when you're painting just because um, things will happen where you've got paint that you know drips out um, especially with the metallics I find that they tend to tail out a little bit and so what I've done is I've just taken my toothpick and I've just um, blended it down to make sure that there's no ridges. To, uh, I don't want to have any any spots underneath of it. I want it to be as flat as possible. So just taking my toothpick and done that and then I'll just take my toothpick and um, just paint over it. It's the amazing thing about acrylics is that most things are pretty fixable. Most little bloopers are um, quite fixable. I'm just gonna let it dry and um, 
paint over it and then you're going to be good to go if it's a real big smudge then i would just i would uh, clear out that whole dot and let it dry and then um, paint the dot over again but sometimes if it's just a tiny little see as you can see right there that little I don't know what you would call it, little ta painting tail or whatnot. Um, you can get away with just keeping your dot and painting around it. And then you carry on. Okay, so as you can see, I've done um, all my dots with the colors that I have. Uh, this is a great thing to when you have, um, when you're blending your paints like this, when you're going one color to the next, and you start, you have that um, true color right from the bottle. This is a great time where I know I can stop, I can take a break, I can go, I can come back, um, I can leave it for the day and come back the next day, and I don't have to worry too much about um, saving my blended colors. You certainly can. You just um, put it in a Ziploc bag, and they last for about a day um, before they start getting a bit too tacky to work with. Um, so I like to blend my colors like this where I go from a true color to a true color and that way I know that if I'm mid midway here I know that once I get to that true color from my bottle I can stop and go and then be able to come back um, because I know that the next time that I'm starting out I'm starting with that true color from the bottle and now I'm blending to my next color so that's just a little tip um, because um, most often it's really difficult if you're using a large canvas to be able to go from start to finish without being able to take a break or come back. Some of these smaller pieces like this one um, or the stones, you can pretty much do it all in one sitting um, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, but when you are doing a larger canvas, it's nice to be able to know when you can actually stop and break without having to um, package up your paints and worrying about them getting too tacky. So now we're going to move on to um, the next set of colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my color that I had, which is my true color from the bottle. I'm just going to save this because I don't want to waste, waste my paint. So I'm going to take that and put it into my next dish. And so I know that that's my true color. I probably will add a little bit more to it. It's not I'm not going to be quite enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing I did. Is I'm going to add little bits and less and less as I go around. Except for that last one because that last one is going to be my true color one. Okay, so my next color is going to be uh, this blue topaz, which is a, a darker color. So what I'm going to do again is I'm adding paint to each one, except now I'm just going in the opposite direction and adding less and less each time and again leaving that first one as the true color and I'm going to blend those so I want a quite a subtle difference now as I carry on I don't want I don't want it to be too distinct between them so I I'm going to do um, Do a few layers here. So now again, I can see probably need a little bit more because we've got three here that are quite consistent. So I'll probably end up again only doing um, five instead of six. I 
Okay, so now I'm going to keep keep going and um, do the exact same thing all the way along, just using the same size tool and using my filler dots in between. And just a note, um, I'm not using the true color that I used from this other tray, um, just because I've already used that in my row, so I don't want to have a double of the same color. So basically I just use this one. Um, you can just start adding your colors into that one. Um, I use that one just as a guide to see, make sure that my, my next shade is different than, than that original true color. Okay, so I have now done all my layers for uh, this color, um, color shading that we just did. And it's the perfect time now to take a break, stretch, warm up your coffee and uh, come back and then we can do uh, that. You, you can start your next set of colors. So this is a great time for the break. And uh, then I'll do one more uh, color change here with you. And then you'll be able to check out the final results um, on Instagram or Facebook uh, once I've finished up the piece. So stretch, pause, stretch. Heat up your coffee, your tea, uh, take a little bit of a break, give your eyes a little bit of a rest. Your eyes can become quite strained if you're, if you're doing this for quite too long without taking a break. So we will take a break and come on back. Okay, so we're back and I've let this dry. I've also uh, finished up my light there with um, a bit of a metallic pearl white. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one more uh, color change together and then like I said you'll be able to see um, I'll carry on and you'll be able to see the final results um, either on Facebook or Instagram. So I'm going to take my color that um, I ended with in my last row before the little break and I'm going to just do the exact same thing that I did before less and less in each of the five trays. And my next color is going to be this really cool color shifting green that I love. So adding adding the way we did before and we're going to mix that up Okay, so we've got our colors mixed and we're going to just carry on doing the same thing. So, so as you can see, I've mixed up that last little bit of colors and I'm going to apply those to my painting. And so far, this is what it looks like and uh, we'll carry on. So I hope you enjoyed this um, video tutorial about color blending. If you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to let me know and um, I hope that you'll stay tuned and uh, see what the final results of this look like. Again, if you want to see the beginning of this painting, uh, feel free to go back to the other video that will be posted about um, how we create our stencils and get it, re get it prepared for this step, which is 
which is blending colors. So I will see you next time. I hope you you have been enjoying the videos. Um, I have a lot more to share with you. So please make sure that you subscribe if you if you'd like to continue learning, and uh, we'll continue painting together.